Hi guys, so I'm here today to do my May book haul. Goodness, can't believe it's May. I'm going to split this into two videos because I've acquired quite a few ebooks either for review or that I've bought myself over the past few weeks and thought therefore I would save those and talk about them in a separate haul because there's quite a few like I mentioned and then in this video talk about the physical books that I mainly acquired kind of before a lot of this started just before I came up to Edinburgh or just as I came to Edinburgh a few that were gifts a couple I bought myself when the shops were still open and one I think that I was sent for review so I bought myself two books like I mentioned a few weeks ago when the shops were still open and I'm going to start with those the first one is Meddling Kids by Edgar Cantero this I picked up because it's inspired by Scooby-Doo. You can kind of guess there from the four figures and the dog on the front as well as that title Meddling Kids because that is often the way the group was described by those that they managed to unmask throughout the cartoon. And I was a die-hard Scooby-Doo fan. I loved everything about Scooby-Doo, the movies, not the live action ones, <laughs> the cartoon TV show. They were some of my favourite fictional characters growing up and I've heard some really interesting things about this book so I felt like I had to check it out. It says on the back that in 1970s the Blighton Summer Detective Club unmasked the elusive Sleepy Lake monster, another low-life fortune hunter who would have gotten away with it too if it weren't for those meddling kids. So there we kind of have the Scooby-Doo-esque setup. but then the rest of the narrative is set in the 1990s um, when the former detectives are haunted by strange half-remembered events that cannot be explained by a guy in a mask. And I'm just so intrigued. I think this just could be such a fun concept. I love the idea of Scooby-Doo but for adults with a slightly darker twist which I think this has so I'm, I'm really excited. I then picked up The Strange Case of the Alchemist's Daughter by Theodora Goss. This is a first in a historical paranormal mystery series and another one that's inspired by another fictional narrative. This is a combination of different famous horror novels so I think it includes references to Sherlock Holmes, to Dr Jekyll and Mr Hyde, Frankenstein, The Island of Dr Moreau, a whole host of classics there and we follow in this book Mary Jekyll, presumably a relative of uh, Dr Jekyll, alone and penniless following her parents death quickly finds herself drawn into the secrets of her father's mysterious past. A clue leads her to believe that Edward Hyde, her father's former friend and a murderer, may be nearby and there is still a reward for information resulting in his capture. A reward that would solve all her immediate financial woes. And I'm just so intrigued by another story inspired by kind of classic horror mysteries and that also combines lots of those in one place. Back when I first started booktube I read and really enjoyed a book called The Madman's Daughter by Megan Shepherd, which did a similar thing in that it was inspired first by the island of Dr Moreau, was then in book two inspired by Dr Jekyll and Mr Hyde and then in book three inspired by Frankenstein but that series for me very much tailed off. I didn't like the two sequels although I finished the series and I'm hoping this will kind of like exceed that book, give me some of those kind of dark creepy vibes but also be better. <laughs> I was then sent one physical book for review. You've probably already seen me talk about this one because it was Good Girl Bad Blood by Holly Jackson. This is the sequel to A Good Girl's Guide to Murder which is a YA mystery series now with two books and and I love this. I've already read this. I talked about it on my Instagram. I did a whole like read along in 24 hours on my stories and I reviewed it in some of my recent videos so I'll link those down below. But I mean I for starters love the YA mystery genre. It's a crossover of, of two categories that I think works so well and I think Holly Jackson is a really exa great example of that genre. She just writes the most clever mysteries with fantastic twists and turns and really endearing like teen protagonists and it's also set in the UK whereas I feel like a lot of sort of YA mysteries are set in America so I quite enjoy that element to it but obviously I don't want to give too much away about this because it's book two in a series but I loved it, really really good and would really recommend book one. The rest of the books in this haul were then all gifts. So the first one my mum had picked up before I came up to Edinburgh and passed on to me when I arrived and it's The Grand Sophie by Georgette Hare. So earlier this year I read a Georgette Hare book called The Corinthian on the recommendation of my friend Taylor whose channel I'll link down below and after I read it I passed it on to my mum and she really enjoyed it as well. It's what she just describes as a bit of a yarn, it was like a romantic mystery adventure about a young woman and man in the 1800s and it was just a lot of fun. They're not recent books, I think she was writing in the sort of 50s so she's writing in a period that's historical for us now about another historical period and they're just 
good fun basically. They're quite amusing and silly and I've not read any more of her books so my mum decided to pick us up a copy of The Grand Sophie. This is just the one she came across in the bookshop so we could both read another one by her and hopefully just like enjoy the sort of like rip-roaring silly adventure of the 1800s. I don't really know what to expect from this one because she just picked it up since it's by Georgette here but on the back it says when the redoubtable Sir Horace Stanton Lacey is ordered away on diplomatic business he parks his only daughter Sophie with his sister's family in Berkeley Square. Upon her arrival, Sophie is bemused to see her cousins are in a sad tangle. The heartless and tyrannical Charles is betrothed to a pedantic blue stocking, Cecilia is besotted with a beautiful but quite feather-brained poet, and Hubert has fallen foul of a moneylender. It looks like the Grand Sophie has arrived just in time to sort them out, but she hasn't reckoned with Charles, who has only one thought, to marry her off and rid the family of her meddlesome ways. That's quite fun because it doesn't seem to focus on a romantic plot in the blurb, instead it sort of sounds like Sophie is going to kind of rescue her relatives from um, um, unwitting circumstances and I like that idea so hoping to enjoy this one and then my mum also picked me up a box set of books so there's 10 books here and it is the first 10 famous five books by Enid Blyton so my mum picked me this up in the works which is a sort of discount shop here in the UK and the whole box set was £15 so an excellent bargain birthday present that I very much appreciated because I adored The Famous Five when I was a kid. I devoured these novels, although most of them I got out of the library. And to this day, I actually only still own one Famous Five book, which funnily enough is book 11. Like, I did not anticipate that at all, but I was looking through my old kids' books and realized I own 11. So I now have books one to 11, and I thought it would be really fun to reread these. I want to do a video where I reread some childhood favorites, a vlog style read-along videos so that's something I am planning on doing in the next few weeks and including maybe one or two of these famous five books because like I said they were just such fun when I was a kid. These are like mystery novels set in the mid 1900s. When did they originally come out now that I come to think of it? That I am curious about. They first came out in the 40s, so, so that's also sort of the era they're set in from what I remember. And yeah, I don't know how these will live up to my memories, but it'll be fun to try. And then I was very kindly sent three books as birthday presents from my lovely friend Ashley, again, here on YouTube, whose channel I'll link down below. And I am so thrilled with all of these. I cannot wait to read them. The first one I'm actually reading this month with Ashley, we're buddy reading it, and it's Arusha and the End of Time by Roshana Choksi. This is also the Myth Take Reads read at the moment, so Ashley runs a book club called Myth Take Reads where they read books inspired by myths and fairy tales and this is the current pick so if you're looking to get involved you can sort of see if you can get a copy yourself. And this is a middle grade book based on Indian folklore. It's about Arusha who has a tendency to stretch the truth in order to fit in at her private middle school. While her classmates are jetting off to exotic vacations she'll be spending her autumn break in the Museum of Ancient Indian Art and Culture that her mum curates. Is it is it any wonder Aru makes up stories about being royalty, travelling to Paris and having a chauffeur? One day, three schoolmates show up at Aru's doorstep to catch her in a lie. They don't believe her claim that the museum's lamp of Barata is cursed and they dare Aru to prove it. Just a quick light, Aru thinks, then she'll never ever fib again. But lighting the lamp has dire consequences. She unwittingly frees the sleeper, an ancient demon who is intended on awakening the god of destruction. Her classmates and mother are frozen in time and it's up to Aru to save them. This just sounds brilliant and it was actually a book that I'd had my eye on anyway, so was just so pleased to be sent a copy by Ashley. She also, and honestly, I feel like Ashley just gets my taste <laughs> to a T, so she sent me The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon, another book I have been meaning to check out for the longest time. I was very much waiting for paperback because it's a big book and I thought it would be quite hard to read as a hardback, but as you can probably tell from the cover, this is a dragon fantasy, and I love dragons, but more than that, this is a dragon fantasy with a female-female romance, and those are two of my favourite things in books. I'm actually trying to write my own fantasy novel at the moment with dragons and a female female romance so I couldn't ask for any more although I'm sure this is very different from whatever I'm trying to type up. It's also I believe based on a legend the one of Saint George and the dragon it's not a sort of legend I'm that familiar with but I think that that sounds like such an interesting concept to see a sort of like queer retelling of that in a fantasy world and I'm so so excited. I've heard nothing but good things so I'm also kind of nervous but really excited. <laughs> we then last but not least from Ashley I have one Warriors, witches, women. This is a book all about women from mythology. So it's called Mythology's Fiercest Females by Kate Hodges. And as you can tell, 
I've got Medusa with her snake hair here on the front. I think this goes beyond Greek mythology. This is about women in all different sort of branches of mythology and folklore. It's split into sort of categories like witches, warriors, elemental spirits, munificent spirits, and then it has gorgeous illustrations to accompany them all. So that's Morrigan, who's apparently a Celtic goddess. <laughs> the Pythia, who I know about. This was a Greek priestess, or what I might refer to as an, an oracle or seer. Pele, who's a Hawaiian goddess. White buffalo calf woman from um, indigenous American Lakotan tradition. This just looks so gorgeous, and I'm so excited to dive into this and learn more about women from various different like mythologies, folk tales, traditional cultures. And I used to love, and I've always loved books like this. I have this massive encyclopedia of fairies and magical creatures that I have poured over since I was about 15 years old when I got it for my birthday and still use as a reference book for when I'm writing. Who cares about Wikipedia? This book has it all. And similarly I feel like this is going to offer me so much insight and knowledge and sort of maybe an opportunity to like compare goddesses and women from different traditions and again just like such a thoughtful gift, can't believe how well Ashley knows me. So those are all the physical books that I've acquired over the past sort of like month, month and a half and I'm really really looking forward to reading if I haven't already. Like I mentioned already I will be filming a separate Kindle ebook haul just because there's quite a few of those and I'd rather have more time just because there's quite a few of those and it will give me more time to talk about them all individually. But until then, I would love to hear any thoughts you have on the books I've mentioned in this video. Happy reading. I'll see you all again soon. Bye guys.